Let's try one more time. Warms me up. Woo! Gets me going. Yeah, that's good. That was really good. You guys doing okay? Yes. Doing great. Uh, I really Lord. sense this morning that uh, God has a message. A lot of times as a pastor, we're going to bring a message. But I believe that there's power already been released this morning yeah. for something specific in your life. I don't know what that is. He didn't give me. I, I'm, Kenneth Hagin used to read people's mail, he called it. And he'd go by and he could sense things in the spirit. I don't have that necessarily. But I do know that this morning's different. Yeah. And then it, as much as you pull on the anointing of God, mm -hmm. as much as you listen. And so what I've been praying in the back is that you would have revelation, wisdom, and knowledge. Yeah. So what that basically means is that God will reveal through the word his wisdom for this season. Yeah. And then he'll give you what knowledge, how to apply that, which is really good. Can we pray with the Lord? So, Father, we thank you for the words. I'm super excited uh, to be able to bring it, Lord. I thank you that you speak through me, make my words clear. But more than that, that we have ears that are open. The Father, I thank you that we're going to hear specifically, individually, yeah. what you want to speak to us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been talking about faith for weeks. Yeah. Has your faith uh, increased yeah. at all? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. My faith is, I almost want to say it's at a supernatural level to believe for things that I couldn't believe for before. And uh, so I want to talk about something, and I want to get it to you in a little different way. Uh, my little, this is the oh, coolest thing. Uh, that was so neat. So I'm going to basically, uh, as I was studying this out, the Lord gave it to me in a way that I've never heard it taught before. So it's not to say that I'm all that in 75 eggs and shit. <laughs> I want to open up a, an idea, a concept to you that may be different than what you thought before. So uh, often there's a natural principle used in the Bible to teach us a spiritual truth. And so Paul talks about Roman soldiers. So I just want to fill you in because I'm going to talk about faith in the way of a faith shield. It's good. But it's different than how you would think it would be. So as a Roman soldier, they had two shields <coughs> that they would use. They had one that was three and a half feet around. It was a circle, and they would carry it on their arm. It was much more versatile, so they could block things. But they were also issued a shield. Now, this shield, I wasn't actually going to use Eli. This would work out perfect. But I am short, but not short enough to make this as tall as it should be. Uh, but they were also issued a shield that was four and a half feet tall, two and a half feet in width, and it was concave. And it was, everything was specific for a reason. And uh, I started putting this together, and I thought, wow, this is going to talk a lot about faith. So let me tell you how it was made. It was made in laminated wood. So just like we have plywood, they would laminate the wood together, and then they would curve it, and then they would cover it with leather, and, uh, and they would actually saturate it before they went into battle. So the leather was wet, and uh, it had purpose in that. And uh, so this is what would happen when military forces, now I'm sure maybe you've seen Gladiator. Yeah. Or one of those. Okay, they actually had this formation. Now, I'm going to be shorter than I normally am, but we'll go with that anyway. Uh, so what would happen with this shield is that it was a force to be reckoned with because when they would come out, they would place it down. Mm -hmm. And since it was over 20 pounds, it's not something they wielded all the time. But they would lay a foundation with it. They would put their foot here right behind it. Then they would put their shoulder into it, and they would lean down. So basically, they would be completely covered by the shield oh, uh, that they would go forward with. And there was a purpose in that. Uh, the purpose was naturally they weren't going to get pummeled with different things coming forward. But the other thing that happened is that a secondary unit would come behind them, and they would actually place the shields on top. Mm -hmm. So you had shields in front and shields on top. And man, I love how the Bible reads because there's purpose in all that. So you plant it, you crouch behind it. And uh, it was to hold their ground. But this is what I thought was really neat. What the Roman soldier would call this is he would call it his door. Hmm. Huh. He didn't call it his shield. They were often re referred to as the door. And this is the shield was referred to as a door. The enemy would first have to get past the door or the shield wow. to get to the soldier. Come on, that's good. And what was really amazing about it, so I want you to think about this. If with your shield of faith, and you plan it before you, what does the enemy encounter first? Do they wow. encounter you first? No. no, that's so good. They encounter the shield first. That's yeah. good. And I want to establish this first because where we're going, uh, it may tilt you a little bit. And so I want to establish this first. And this is the other thing that's really cool. Why don't you step up here with me, Josh? And unfortunately, he doesn't have another shield. But the reason we need other believers is because we link our shields. 
So all of a sudden, if Josh had one, he doesn't. Oh, you're so cool. So what would end up happening is that when we're in a battle, we link our shields yeah. together. And then what would happen is Reggie, because hi, Reggie. No, 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 stand back there. <laughs> and Reggie would bring his shield, and he'd put it over us. Yeah. Collectively, what would happen is the army would move as a group. And when they would take territory, they would take territory linked together. Wow. And what was interesting with that, you guys sit down, is that uh, when there was wounded, so how they would do battle with this is that they would put all the shields and then they would have spears. So they would open up, they uh -huh. spear someone, and then they put the shields back down. And uh, But what was interesting to me is that they did it as a team. We were never yeah. designed to be alone Come on, that's in the good. kingdom. That's right. So if you're consistently spending time on your own, you're not spending time with other people, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, especially with the times we have right now, but we were designed to link together to make forward progress. So important. And I thought about the idea of the door. When you go to a door, doors only open one way. If I was to go to this door on this side, I, it opens this way, but it does not open the other way. One person's in control of opening that door or not. Huh. And, and we'll get there. Can I read Ephesians uh, 6, 16? And we'll just start with the foundation. Uh, Ephesians 6, 16. And I'm going to be reading out of New King James. And I encourage you to write down the scriptures at least. Because the next idea that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you over 12 scriptures that gives you uh, a foundation for what we're talking about. In Ephesians 6, 16, it says this, Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yeah. Now, I want you to think about the fiery darts right now. Paul was talking about the most advanced weaponry at their time. They didn't have gunpowder. Yeah. But what they did have is they would take uh, arrows, they go ahead and hollow out the ends of the arrow, and they would put a flammable liquid into it. Wow. And when they would shoot it, they would shoot it, naturally they would hit the shield, but it talks about quenching the fiery darts. Wow. And what would end up happening, because they had the shield in the right position ahead of them, it would go ahead and shield them. So that's, that's what happened. They shoot the arrow, it would fly, it would break, so and then it would go ahead and catch on fire. But because of the leather and that it was wet, they were able to put that fire out. Wow. Let me ask a question. If they didn't have the shield in front of them, what would happen? They'd be hit. They'd die. They would just die. Uh, that's the truth. What's interesting about arrows is that they're undetectable when you're in battle. Now, you can look up and see them raining down on you yeah. if you've seen 300 or something like that. But if someone's flying one straight at you and you're doing something with your sword, it would hit you without you even knowing it. Wow. What's really neat that Paul's talking about is your shield will catch that fiery dart even when you don't know it's coming. Oh, come on. That's good. In advance. Wow. Man, it, it, God has some really cool stuff. So Paul was saying the Roman shield was able to quench the most advanced weaponry. This is what a powerful statement of the Lord. He said, they come into quick reaction, but if the soldier has a shield in place, then it doesn't need to see the flaming dart. For the shield will stop them in advance. Wow. And uh, so I want you to think about through this whole message is it, do you have your shield of faith up? Do you get up every morning prepared for the day with your shield of faith? <clears throat> I'm going to say that you do because I'm going to go a little different direction with it. So <laughs> how about this? I can relate to this thing. Uh, there's many things in my life I don't see coming. Do you ever have that? It could yeah. be a sickness. All of a sudden, you get a, a report. But can I tell you, God is never caught unaware. Yeah. And if we have the shield of faith ahead of us, you know, it's going to quench that fire dart. The other thing I noticed, there's many so things good. that I don't even know probably would have happened to me if I wasn't prepared to have Father God first. So good. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about the shield, the one above, it catches all the rocks. Another thing that they used to do is that they would go ahead and forge to the front of a fort, and then they'd be throwing rocks down on them. Uh, it says in uh, Ephesians 16, 6, above all, put on the shield of faith. So it doesn't say that the other armor isn't powerful. It just says the shield of faith is what you want to put on above all. Uh, when studying this, I came across a powerful and comforting truth. So here's a couple of scriptures you want to write down. 
this is it. God never changes. Yeah. God never changes, and it'll get my bench better. So thank you. In Malachi 3, 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. This is important because where I'm going, I'm going to establish an Old Testament truth that will go into the New Testament. In James 1, 17, it says this. This is out of the New English Translation. All generous giving and every perfect gift is from above, yeah. coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow of turning. That's right. Very, I have variation or slightest hint of change. This speaks of God's character. I want you to know that if he's done it for Dr. Pam, he'll do it for you. Yeah. If you're believing for healing in your body and someone else's, he'll just rejoice because yeah. of the respecter of people. It speaks of his character, how consistent and trustworthy he is. Uh, how he honors his promises, and he never changes. So if it happened in the Old Testament, is it the same God in the New Testament? Yes. Now, we have a better covenant, don't we? Yeah. Yes. But it's still true yes. if he did it for them. So I want you to think about this. I'm going to establish, I'm going to give you 12 scriptures. We're going to read every one. What was the scripture on that one? The scripture on that one was James 1.17 and Malachi 3.6. Let's start with Genesis 15.1. Genesis 15.1. These will all be out of the New King James. And you guys, if you don't look it up on your phone, I'd love you to see it. And if you're in U version, you can actually highlight it. And it says this, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. What does it say? Uh, he's, he's super quiet. So wild, Let's sure. try, it, try it again. Uh, believe me, we've got 12 times this, so you'll get it when we go. <laughs> After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. What? I am your shield. shield. Who is his shield? God. So if we're putting on the shield of faith, who are we putting on? Wow. The God. Lord. That's good. Uh, it'll get clearer. Let's go. Deuteronomy 33, 29. Deuteronomy 33, 29. And they're just going to rip them with me down there. So it says, Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. It says what? <laughs> Of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you and you shall tread down their high places. So in Deuteronomy it says, who is the shield of help? God is. Father God is the shield of help. So if you're putting up the shield of faith, who are you putting up? Him. You're putting up God. So your shield of faith, I'm going to set uh, a principle and ask you to start thinking, could it be the shield of faith? is easily identifiable because who you're putting forward is God in your life. That's so good. Uh, we'll go more. There's, there's quite a few. This is really good. 2 Samuel 22, 3. It says, The God of my strength in whom I will trust. Can you read the next line? My shield. Are they up there? They're not up there. That's what the problem is. Okay. I was wondering why I was losing them. Okay. Can you find it? 2 Samuel 22, 3. Because here's what I want you to do. I want you to repeat it as I'm saying the words because I want it to sink in for you. Thanks, guys, in the back. It says, my God is my strength in whom I will trust. What's the next line? He is my shield and the power that saves me. That's really good. Uh, let's try it one more time. Uh, this is really good. We'll just be in Bible school like I'm at Raymond. And uh, so it says, the God of my strength in whom I will trust is what? My, my shield, shield. and the Lord of my salvation. Who who is your shield? The Lord. God. Father, God's your shield. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're asking Ephesians sixteen six to put on the shield of faith, so who are we putting on? Father God. We're putting on Father God. So when we get up in the morning, this is what I do. Father God, I choose you. Yes. It's your plan. It's your purpose today. Right. Yes. I've got to go to work at 8 o'clock, but I've got to orchestrate my day looking for your vision and your plan. That is so and good. so he says, I tell you what, there's a whole bunch of fiery darts coming to you today. Wow. And you don't even know about it, but the enemy has a plan. And this is what's interesting. I'm not going to get into this too deep, but the enemy has no access into your life, but the access you allow him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So the issue is if you don't put on your shield of faith, your armor, he has access to you. Yeah. If you don't know your authority, he has access to yeah. you. Yeah. It's, it's amazing yeah. to me that I talk to a lot of believers that are living so much beneath what they should be. Let's go on. How about Psalms 28? Psalms has so much to say about this. So good. Psalms 28, 7. And it says this. What? 
The first line, the Lord is my strength and my shield. And my shield. That's right. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. So, so in Psalms 28, 7, what is your strength and shield? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. You probably pretty much got the big idea for today. So good. I, I want you to understand that it's not a confusing idea. It's faith is something that people say, man, I just don't know if I have enough faith. That's Your something. shield of faith has way, way. That's Father God. Yes. Yeah. It's a That's different right. idea. How about this? How about Psalms 3320? Psalms 3320. It says this. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is what? My shield. Uh-oh. Who needs help sometimes? Man, I need help every day. Because I have my idea of what I should do. But I wonder what Father God's idea is for me to do. So it says our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help. And our shield. And our shield. Woo, it's getting yeah. good. Psalms 84, 11. Check this out. First line. For the Lord God is a sun and, and what? Shield. shield. And a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold for those who walk uprightly. Can I tell you, he's got a plan for your life that's more glorious than you can imagine. Absolutely. Man, we don't have to live beneath. Yeah. Always just getting by. I think Father God say, no, I want you to be more than enough so people can see my goodness. Let's keep going. How about Psalms 91.4? And at the end, I do have a prize if someone can rip all these scriptures down to me. So if you've been writing them down, you're in good shape. Here we go. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be what? My shield. And buckler. Do you know what a buckler is? You would think it's the belt. It's not. The buckler is the second shield that oh, they no use. Oh. So uh, if you look it up, it's buckler. And the other thing I want to talk about this word shield, if you look in Strong's Concordance, it's all the same. It's 4064 if you're looking up the number. And it means favor and glory. Wow. God's favor and glory. Amen. That's good. Shield. Wow. Really good. How about 119? This is one of my favorites. 119, verse 114 says, You are my shield. hiding place and, and what? My shield. My shield. You know what? When we don't know what to do and we want to retract, where do we retract to? Father God. No. It says that what? He's a fortress. He's a strong tower. Yeah. I'm never alone. How about Psalms 144.2? It says, My loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer. What's the next line? My shield, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge. Yes, thank you for the four people that said that. That is <laughs> wonderful. Uh, yes, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge. Can I ask you a question? If you were walking through a tremendous battle and you knew by quoting scripture it would change, how would you quote that scripture? Uh -huh. mm. Yes. Would it be like this? Man, it's my shield. <laughs> no, what would you be doing? You'd be crying that thing out, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. We try to do it in our own strength, but what if I told you today that God says, if you'll put on the shield of faith, which is me personally, and you shout my scripture into Hallelujah. a situation you have, you'll see an effective change. Yes. So what I'm doing is giving you precept and example. So when I ask you to repeat after me, it's not because I just want to hear your voice. I want you to hear your voice so saying the scripture. Right. I want you to get in practice when something buffets your body, when you get an attack from the enemy, when a fiery dart comes in, what do you quote? I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. I knew I would never have enough. Man, another illness in my body? Might as well add it in. I've already got 19 of them. No. When that thing comes in, where do you go? Yes. You go to the Word. Yes. So it says, you know what? My loving kindness and my fortress. Who's my loving kindness and my fortress? The Lord. Father God is. Yeah. My high tower and my deliverer. My, I'm not my own deliverer. My yeah. shield and the yeah. one in whom I take refuge. Yeah. Who subdues my people underneath me. Oh, it's good to hear. How about Proverbs 35? Proverbs 35. Just so you know, if you want to study this out, there's 64 scriptures that talk about God being the shield. Uh, I stopped. I was going to add them all in. I thought, I don't think we can take 64. <laughs> and it says in uh, Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. He is a what? Shield, Shield. to those who put their trust, trust in him. him. Yes. Yes. We're getting there. We're getting there. That's good. That's good. 
I tell you what, when when calamity comes into your life on, and you have scripture, I want you to yell it out. Yeah. I want yeah. you to yell it out. What if you don't know scripture? You know Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell you what, don't wait till you yeah. get into a situation you need the word and then start studying the word. Yeah. It's a tough one. Amen. Uh, <laughs> through these scriptures that I gave you, in the Old Testament, if God never changes and he's always the same, and he's saying yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Would we be able to at least think about that in the Old Testament, if he was the shield, could he be the shield in the New Testament? Absolutely. Yeah. I think he could be a shield in the New Testament. Uh, I think it, in Ephesians 6.16, I want to read it again to you, but I'm going to read it out of several versions. And this is what we started with. It says, above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench how many fiery darts? Oh. All the fiery darts of the wicked one. No. We think sometimes that God will take some of it away. No. Can I give you something that I've heard? That God uses illness or different things to teach us a lesson. No. Mm -hmm. I'm meddling a little bit. He would never use that. Yeah. Because he has a plan for me a, that's a hope yes. and a good plan. Yes. He doesn't need to teach me by calamity. That's he doesn't good. use that. Can he use a situation and turn it for his benefit? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. In the English Standard Version, it says, because in King James it says, above all. In the English Standard Version, it says, in all circumstances, That's put on right. the shield of faith. How about this? In the Good News Translation, it says, at all times, carry faith as a shield. Wow. And in King James, it says, above all, take the shield of faith. The Living Bible says, in every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. The passion is really cool. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield. Uh -huh. For it is able to distinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. That's good. So this is what I think would be on my shield. Uh, if I was holding up a shield and the devil came to me, I would give him the no access reaction. <laughs> and the no access re reaction is this. It says, we can say you have zero access, read the shield. <laughs> Here's the issue. Many times we walk on our own. We're not covered by the, press of the promises or the blessing of God for us. We're outside of his will. Right. So what's interesting is that I've started, and I'm going to actually have this in my office. I'm not going to get this out every day and plan <laughs> For the first couple of days I made. <laughs> because it reminds me of what I'm doing. Yeah. If right. Father God is my shield, if he's my strong tower, if he's my fortress, if I can hide in him, yeah. then I'm going to make him first in my life. Uh, it says the devil will look for an access point. So he's going to send the fiery darts. Just know that if we're, as long as we're on this earth, the devil has a plan. And the plan is to do what? Kill, 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 destroy. destroy. Absolutely. So he wants to kill any promise or plan that you have. He wants to steal any victory that you might have. Yeah. And he wants to destroy families. He wants to destroy your body. But here's the thing. He almost has to come up to you and he has to knock on your shield. Can I have access to your life? No. And you say, no. You know what this is for? No. They put this on this for blood force trauma. Wow. So if someone got too close to the door, they would lift it up and they'd crack them in the head with it. And I thought, wow, they're brutal. <laughs> and uh, I thought, we have a lot of different military guns and everything right now, but everything then yeah. was manual. Yeah. So they put this on and it was the only thing that was made of metal. It was for blood, blood force trauma. Huh. And the whole lesson today is just to talk about pick up your shield. Do it every morning. Now, I want you to read in Ephesians, read about the armor of God. What's your offensive armor? Do you know? The word. The, the sword, the word. So if all of a sudden you're, everybody's hunkered down behind their shield, but you don't have your sword, huh. it's a little difficult. You'll be able to withstand the devil for quite a time. But you know what really happens is when you start quoting the word, and the devil comes in and he says, hey, I tell you what, you're gonna. There's a diagnosis the doctor just gave you about cancer in your body, and he's waiting for something. He's waiting for what you speak out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why I'm real silent. That's so good. When I get a negative report, I'm super silent, and then I go to the word, and then I find out what the word has to say. Yeah. 
And then I speak the word over that situation. And then I can talk to others. Can I give you a little bit of an idea? Um, gosh, I'm meddling too much. Okay. It's not your diabetes. It's not your cancer. It's not your arthritis. It's not your lung disability. Come on, it's good. This is something that's in your body that doesn't have a right to be there. So don't take ownership of it. I hear people, let me tell you what's going on in my body. What I'd rather you tell me what's going on in your spirit. Yeah. So I don't mind you telling me what's going on. Hey, what's going on? I tell you what, I went in, this is a report. Well, let me couple hands with you. Let me link my shield with you. We'll couple it together. We'll have a couple more, put it on top. Yeah. So if any more fiery darts come in, what happens? We can quench those and yeah. start speaking life over your situation. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, the other thing I want you to do is I want you to lean into it. When you don't know what to do, what a actual Roman soldier would do, he'd put his foot down, he would hold on, he would lean into that shield. I want you to picture that if this is Father God, the shield of faith, you need to lean in yeah. that's good. to him. Yeah. That's good. Lean into him. Don't trust your own ability to do it. Because uh, he may want to do it a million different ways. Yeah. Really. Good. And especially in finances, I've seen God give it to me a million different ways. Yeah. Uh, give you my latest. I, I, I dive dumpsters. Thank you. <laughs> I do it all the time. But uh, I found 14 boxes of baseball cards. And they're rather old. Wow. So... There's too many. I started going through them. You have probably 25,000 cards, maybe more. Uh, you know, I started looking, $11, $12. There's one, and I'm hoping I have it, is $6,500. So I don't know if it's in there or not. So this is what I believe. I talked to some people, and they said, you know what? Those are junk ones that people threw away. I said, oh, wait a minute now. This is what I believe. I believe what happened is maybe there was a miracle, right. miracle problem between husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> wife got mad and threw away his business. <laughs> baseball card. I'm not believing for anybody's marriage. Yeah. Card. But it was interesting that uh, it can come a million different ways. Absolutely. Give me another one. It's just so, so strange. I needed a Bluetooth keyboard. A what? Bluetooth keyboard. I wanted a Bluetooth I didn't need it, but I wanted it. When you're typing on a little screen here, a uh, Bluetooth yeah. keyboard. Yeah. This is the craziest thing. I go by on a job site. In a box is an Apple Bluetooth keyboard. Wow. wow. I It's full of water. So I shake it out. I put it in rice. That's I guess every rice solves everything. <laughs> I put two batteries in it. I'm using it now. Wow. And God can get it to you a million Anywhere. different ways. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be a poverty mentality That's necessarily. That's so good. Uh, but God can do it. Uh, let, me, let me say this. A Roman soldier would never leave his shield behind. What would it mean to him if he went into battle without his shield? Wow, death. He would perish. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, it, what does it mean to you as a believer wow. if you go into your daily routine without your shield of faith? That's so good. You don't consult God daily. Wow. I'm not getting in the I'm a pastor. I have those days I don't read. I have those days that I try to solve it on my own. Yeah. But I'm really purposing to say, what is God's plan in this? Because yeah. he may say something totally different than how I think it's going to happen. That's so good. good. Really good Let me give you Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, and we're going to wrap. This is out of the Amplified. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, out of the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. It says that strength which is boundless, my boundless might provides. Listen to 11. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies. Wow. Who supplies your armor? God. Uh, we don't even have to go dig it up. Wow, come on. We don't even have to be qualified to earn it. When you have salvation, you accept the Lord, he gives you what? Your armor. Yes. Because yeah. he wants you to be successful in, uh, in your journey. So good. And, uh, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceit of the devil. Listen to 12. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Yeah. And it says contending only with physical opponents, but against the uh, despot, what is that? Rulers. Yeah, well, mine says something totally. Against the powers, against the masters of Master uh, spirits, spirits who are the world. Let me try that again. Oh. But again, <laughs> the, the, against the powers, against, and it says the master spirits who are the world rulers of the present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in heavenly, play, in heavenly spheres, it says 13, therefore put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground 
on the evil day of danger. Does it say we'll never have an evil day of danger? No. 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 It just says, just like the Roman soldier, get up every day and your habit is put on the armor. Come on, it's good. My Bible's in the car. I have it on the dash. Why do I have it on the dash? Because it reminds me that I can read it anytime. Yeah. So when I'm stopped at the light, I don't necessarily read <laughs> then, but if I'm stopped on the side of the road, I'll read. Or if I'm waiting for my McDonald's meal. Or if I'm in a Starbucks line, which now takes almost 40 minutes to get through. Think, man, I can read a whole six Lord. chapters by the time I get done with that. And what does it do? It empowers me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it takes you from a victim mentality to a victorious mentality. That's right. Good. You look differently at your circumstances. So, so good. Right. And it says, therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all... The crisis demands to stand, just stand for the oh, place. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to leave with is another faith uh, nugget. It just says you need to put on the, the shield of faith. Yeah. And I believe that what God revealed to me was that I am the shield of faith. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. the shield of faith in the Old Testament on, to those so that good. believed in me. And I said early on that faith is what? Faith is a persuasion. It's a firm persuasion. Yes. It's a conviction upon hearing. Yes. <laughs> so if you believe God is your fortress and your strong tower, put him on. Yeah. And I kind of think of it this way. You're kind of naked. <laughs> if you get up in the morning, you do your day. At the end of the day, if you spend time with God, nothing wrong with that. That's your time. But I would at least spend some time in the morning. And you sit down and say, "Woo, that was a day. And he says this, you were never meant to walk that out today. Wow. wow. If you would have met with me earlier, I would have told you not to leave when you left. Wow. Or I would have revealed to you what was happening on your job site. When that person treated you poorly, I could have told you why. Wow. They had just had something happen in their life. So at the end of the day is a tough one. Because at the end of the day, you're kind of just doing highlight reels mm -hmm. of what huh. happened. Yeah. Versus if Come you on, get in so the good. morning with Father God, and he starts revealing things to you, you can navigate your day differently. Very good. So I'm going to end with next week. We're going to do one more on faith. <coughs> but my hope is that 2022 is different than 2021. Yeah. My hope is that you can believe that God is such a big God and he loves you so much that those dreams and desires and plans uh, that you have will come into place. Let me tell you one that we have, and it will be debuting in June. We're really believing for the children's department, so I'm going to give you just a little more of a nugget. Believing for a bus. I went and looked at the first one. I don't think I can get that big home. It's 72 seater. Oh. And I thought, so we went driving through the neighborhoods we want to go. I don't think I can get it through the neighborhoods like that. <laughs> so I told you, it was such a great price. It was such a great bus. And then uh, we went over to look at it, and then I got in it, and I thought, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, so we're looking for probably that 35 passengers. So believing, we believing with me. Uh, yes. There was a church that was, uh, they had one that they are selling. And I asked him, would you ever think of donating to another ministry that's going to serve kids? So I'll let God do it any million different ways. Yeah. Let me just tell you what we're looking at in June. Uh, we're going to take this time to put together a children's program. And we're going to be going out on Saturdays. And we'll be ministering to families at their location. And so we're going to be feeding them. We're going to be doing some different things like that. And then we're going to canvas the neighborhood. And then we're going to hand out a flyer. And then we're going to stop by and pick up the kids. That's and then good. we're going to zip them to church. Uh, so God's rolling ideas. But uh, we're going to teach them on the bus. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Uh, when they get here, we're going to have them ready for the word. And when they leave, we're going to reinforce what they learned when they were there. And here's the hope. Is that they get saved and they accept the Lord. And we believe that their parents will see such a change yes. in their kids. That they're going to say, look, we got to come and see what you got going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just give me a second thing that we're looking at, and uh, it's a little early, but we're looking at a farmer's market on the grounds and where we could have a lot of people in for a farmer's market. That's good. And these are just opportunities for us to get outside the church and reach kids. So what am I doing? I'm getting my shield of faith on, and I'm communing with God every day. What's the plan? Yeah. I don't want to get ahead of you. So he's just starting to drop some things. We have... Um, booked a children's evangelist coming in and he's premiered and we were going to do it in june but we won't be ready but we set him up for next year and what's really cool he comes in for no fee just an offering mm -hmm. but they've had over sixty-five thousand kids saved wow. uh, in the ministry and i can't remember if it's 
three or ten years. It's a very short span of time. But he comes in with a whole crew and does this amazing program. Okay. And so for me, it's going to be a culmination. So just to leave, be believing with you with kids, we need workers. Yeah. I believe we're going to have immediately over 30 kids, which will fill our classroom. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it's going to be a great thing. Just be believing with me with that. So I'm looking at avenues. What's the most fertile ground? Kids. Yeah. Uh, most kids saved, 83% of people get saved before the age of 12. And I thought, well, we're going to go after kids before the age of 12. Yeah. And uh, we're going to sew in them. And then we're going to be doing lots of things. We're going to be doing sewing classes, how to do checkbooks, just real practical That's things good. to help the community. Yeah. yeah. So, That's uh, so, good. so get shield faith up. Start believing God with us. Uh, this is the church's best day. Amen. Not the church. You know, I see people, oh, the church is defined, not my church. Not yeah. Me. You know, it may not be in the sanctuary, but it'll be in the community, which is really yes. cool. So can we just pray? Now, Father God, we thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that uh, that you give them revelation. You give them knowledge. And Father, you give them wisdom yes, Lord. about this word today. Father, the things that I missed that you wanted to say, you just added it. Yes. Drop it in your spirit. Father, I thank you. We make the choice today that we choose to put you on first today. Lord. Father, and going forward in the week, that Father, we're going to put on our shield of faith expecting what? For you to reveal your purpose yes, and your plan. Lord Father, God. we thank you for that. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray right now for dreams and yes. visions and desires that you put in people's hearts. Yes, Lord. That, Father, bring it back to their remembrance. Lord, Lord. And, Lord, right now, the ministering angels are going forth yes. right now, creating a way for those Lord, things to happen. Lord. Father, you move the Lord, things that need to move. Yes. You put in place what needs to be put in place. Yes, God. Father, for those anointed dreams to happen. Yes. Father, I just want to speak with this, too. Uh, Father, there's people that have... Uh, illness in their body. Father, I speak in the name of Jesus that has no authority or right to be there. I would ask you right now, just put your hand in whatever area that you have right now. Father, we speak the word of God that says by your stripes we've already been made healthy and whole. That Father, we have authority in the name of Jesus to speak to that illness and to affect a change right now in Jesus' name. Father, I say that that illness is dying on the contact of Jesus' word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. You guys have a phenomenal, phenomenal week. It's going to be a great week. We'll end on faith one more time uh, next week, and then we'll wrap it up, and I think we're going to be going into faith. Favor of God. So we hope this message was exactly what you needed. If you'd like to bless this ministry, you can do so online at generationchurchme.com. If you'd like more content from Generation Church, you can do so by following us on social media. We also want you to know that you are welcomed and you are loved. Thank you. Have a great day.